So I have four real life stories to tell you today about the human health effects of climate change. So it was mid-August last year in South County on one of our hottest days. I was on call for the emergency room and got a call that one of my favorite elderly couple who lived in Peacedale and had no air conditioning and limited resources and family support were there with a high fever and confusion. They were suffering the effects of heat stroke. So we cooled them down and treated them with intravenous fluids and medication to lower their temperature. But they had underlying heart conditions and the demand on the heart resulted in heart failure. They both unfortunately passed away despite our best efforts. More and more people are suffering from heat exhaustion, stroke, and even death as in this couple. And it's from the increased frequency of heat waves in the United States. So my second story is one of a college runner who was having trouble staying on the team because she was having frequent episodes of wheezing and upper respiratory infections. She has asthma and multiple allergies. She was being treated with inhalers and other medications, but she still couldn't perform optimally. So more people are on costly medications and even steroids to keep their asthma and allergies under control. So we are seeing longer and more intense allergy seasons from 177 days 10 years ago to 190 days today and an increase in the levels of air pollution with 7 million people in the world living in areas that exceed the World Health Organization limits on particulate matter. More people are seeking care in the office and in the emergency room at a cost of $11 billion per year for allergy care and $56 billion per year for asthma care. The third story is a patient of mine who went hiking in Arcadia this summer with some friends. He presented to the office with a rash and joint pains a few days later. He had Lyme disease and babesiosis. Both are tick-borne illnesses, and we've seen a tenfold increase in their incidence in the past several years in New England. In addition, vector-borne illness like Zika and West Nile virus and Eastern equine encephalitis from tick bites, sand flies, or mosquitoes is significantly more common and a result of warming temperatures for longer periods around the world. My fourth story is a patient who went to a cilantro bar and about a day later developed diarrhea and abdominal pain. She was healthy, but had acquired a parasitic infection called Giardia from spoiled foods. We are seeing exponential growths in the number of viral, bacterial, and parasitic infections from a disruption in food production, shipment, and storage from farm to table due to increased temperature, flooding, extreme weather events. What is alarming is that the incidence of the four stories I shared with you are exponentially more common today than even a decade ago. In addition, we are seeing more food insecurity, effects on mental health, and mass migration around the world. Climate change affects our environment, our health, and quality of life. It disproportionately affects our most vulnerable populations, the elderly, the frail, the very young, the poor, and communities of color. The warming earth leads to an increase in heat waves, air pollution, melting of Arctic ice, sea level rise, increased frequency and intensity of forest fires, frequent flooding, extreme weather events, and mass species extinction. It is not hyperbolic to say that if we don't act now, it will result in an uninhabitable Earth before the end of the century. So we have one last opportunity to save the planet and ourselves and mitigate the effects of climate change. We need to move to 100% clean renewable energy, that is wind, solar, hydrogen, and safe nuclear within 20 years. 
We need to develop sustainable economic and financial incentive through innovation and green jobs. All nations need to commit to this through the Paris Accord and the upcoming COP26 agreements in November of 2021 in Glasgow, Scotland. You and me as individuals can make a difference in mitigating climate change. People are mobilizing all over the world. We need to spread the word with local, state, and national leaders in your civic organizations, in our schools, colleges, and universities about the effects of climate change on our health. We need to eat healthy, plant-based diets, use renewable energy, such as electric cars and solar panels for our homes. We need to plant a tree, commute less, walk, run, and bike and lead healthy lives. So just ask yourself, which world do you want to live in? A world of famine, drought, heat waves, mass migration, violence and air pollution? or one of healthy diets, biking and hiking, clean energy buildings, electric cars, and national stability. Climate change and your health is a moral and ethical imperative. It's a political imperative, and it's an economic imperative. So as Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. So go do your part to save animals, plants, ourselves, and this precious earth, the only home we have ever known.